Right, basically from the start then, puckle plead. We're using two and a half mil, which is what's basically asked and required in essence. Although we are using blue, campsites do like orange for visibility. The actual cable itself is the same, just different color. 16 amp uh, normal socket. Um, comes to you, a plug-in point on your van. And your regs, I'll try not to quote regs too much because they're really boring and do your reading, but basically the regs state, you don't, you can't have anything that sticks out or protrudes too far. They prefer it that this actually uh, is fitted on the non-on inside. Again, it's to stop trips and hazards and needs a lid to keep it protected. Open up and then obviously there's your proper connection inside. Now, we'll explain in a bit further on in the video, but as you can see, these pins here are very easily touchable. So you've got direct access to them. And we'll go into that in a little bit later. We'll basically open the lid and poker in. And that's it in. And you get your little lever there to release and catch the lid, because the lid is actually a locking mechanism to hold it in place. It does stay on there, we're IP44. It does need some kind of IP rating. I believe 44 is the minimum for this kind of install. Right, we've made a very, very, very basic te little test lead just to demonstrate this. In essence, this would be your uh, hook up lead to your van. Yeah. Are the 13 amp plug or 16 amp plug either way it, it, a plug's a plug with this button it's just to demonstrate the polarity business of things so we plug into the campsite's power supply then we plug into the van then thinking that this is now your van install this little bit here power up now all good our little tester get our three lights everything's all good everything's connected now then, let's reverse polarity. So obviously that's your feed side, this is your van side. So we're gonna go, the feed, we're swapping these round, so we're in Europe somewhere, and they've got a polarity switch, so the neutral there becomes the live on your van. The live, from there, from the site, becomes the neutral on your van. Says. Obviously, make sure everything's turned off and don't try this at home, kids. So now, as you can see, we're now polarity reversed. We power on. We have a fault there now saying live neutral reverse. That's why you always want to carry on these little testers with you if you're going into Europe, just to double check. Very cheap, but can save a lot of harm and, and distance. Now, one of the the big things with this is. Your whole van and everything we've installed switches the live. When you turn that off, that switches live. Now if the reverse if the polarity is reversed, you're actually switching the neutral, not the live. So even though you've turned something off, you lose the circuits, you've killed the negative, but it's still solid live feed to it all the time. Um, so at that, you think it's safe, it's turned off but it's not. You've still got a live going to the actual device. So if the device has got a fault, you will get a belt off it. Well, you, you shouldn't because you've got RCD, but leaving that aside. The other thing to that is all the electronics, most electronics these days are made so to get a bit of a rest and a breather when you turn power off, they can cool down and rest. If you've always got live to it, it's always hitting a live and, 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 and basically sat there with live to it. It's never 100% dead. So that's another reason to watch out for this reverse polarity. Amazon um, and other sellers do do um, adapter leads. They're called a polarity reverse lead. And what they do basically is one side is live and neutral. At the other side, they twist them around in the plug. So then when you plug your lead in, it's back to how it should be, the proper polarity, proper way around. Just what that is off. <laughs> So in essence, it does what I've just done now inside the plug. Which then puts you back to, let's make sure we don't have any stragglers. So now, inside this lead, 
you've got this side at the moment in the UK live neg now obviously we've gone to Europe we've gone to on these sites at reverse polarity you've actually got negative live in here they then twist twist them to round so at your end it is actually the proper way around live neg so then feed two so when you power up you get your correct phase orientation again right then here we go for the internal electrics um, if you pop your heads around here and have a look there's our main board um, as asked before about the plastic boxes uh, yes you can use them in the van because basically they're better for the impact protection they're IP rated um, so that's why we've gone for this one we've gone for a dual board because we've fitted extra bits in there to make life a bit easier and more automatic and basically just going a bit OTT really so if we lift the lid off we can explain what's going on in there get that out of the way so right basically we have got your we'll start on the bottom row two rcds one rcd for the inverter um now basically this covers us for the air thin or any leakage faults um we'll go back into that in a minute you hook up rcd obviously so mains coming in you've got your rcd for there so both the main power feeds are rcd protected then we've got a breaker to protect the inverter for overload so we don't kill the inverter by putting too much power on it protection for the contactor the relay which is this one now this contactor relay we've set that up so it auto switches now by default it always chooses the inverter input um, and it's done like that so if you haven't got a hook up as soon as you switch your inverter on the whole system's powered from the inverter the other side to this as well is because it's done like that uh, as we mentioned earlier the hook up point outside with the pins that you can actually touch because we've got the uh, that uh, the relay working that way on that then pins never become live and they're always totally disconnected from the circuit they only become live when the relay activates and the relay activates when it senses a shore power connection put to it that way it automatically switches to shore power again makes life easier because you don't then have to worry about a separate isolator switch or having to push buttons or choose power sources basically now it knows if it's got shore power it switches the and takes a, a connection away from the inverter as soon as the shore power disappears it fires back to the inverter system and obviously disconnects the hookup point um creeping on the hookup point uh question as well about the length of cable rule of thumb always as short as possible i know it's not always uh, easy to do generally though it's 1.8 meters thereabouts if you go over that um, you need to protect it in a conduit and also it needs supporting i believe it was at, uh i think it's two i can't remember the 400 millimeter section something like that again we can check in the paperwork for that but it's around that but again always very well supported and uh, basically you know some kind of conduit to protect it so going back to this board then we as I said earlier so we've got inverter rcd hookup rcd breaker for your inverter protection the relay protection which is only one amp because that's only protecting the coil circuit then we've got a breaker there for your uh, battery chargers now the battery charger is fed direct from the hookup rcd principle behind that is obviously if you're running on your inverter you don't actually want it to charge your batteries at the same time uh, it's a bit of a paradox because in essence batteries are feeding the inverter inverter then powers the 240 240 charger kicks in starts charging your batteries and you go around in that paradox and you're using more than you actually ever put back in so you never want to charge your batteries i suppose it goes without saying like that so the charger is fed directly before the contactor so if it's on inverter it can never get power and then we go from there up to your top now we've got three spare breakers not connected um, and they're just for future proofing and the ones we are using is left side sockets and right side sockets because the only two forts we're using in the van is for sockets all the breakers are double pole switches 
which basically means when you knock the breaker off uh, yourself or if it goes trips via fault the live and the neutral is isolated so both poles are switched off so if there is ever a fault or as we've said earlier about the reverse polarity I think we said that later actually um, it doesn't matter that sense because this breaker will kill both poles where a standard breaker only turns the live off um, I think that about covers most of the things in there um, I think I don't think there's anything else really we say about that board now if you've got any questions or if you think we've missed anything uh, do ask the one thing we did notice uh, and this is another good point whenever you do any install do test it even if it's just with a, a little plug-in tester to prove you've got all you, your live, your earth and neutrals all in the correct rotation or in the correct areas um, preferably test it for installation tests but again if you're not sure get an electrician to do it for you one of the main reasons we say this now I mean as simply as it was we found out just by pressing the actual test button on the RCD we've actually found a fault with Mark's inverter and it wouldn't have tripped the RCD. Now Mark's inverter is basically like, um, to try and keep it simple, it runs like a transformer where it's got a centre tap to earth. Um, now this is a huge topic, uh, it's a massive can of worms, much too long for this video to really go into, but in very basic terms, instead of having 240 live and a zero or, or potential zero volts neutral, where neutral and earth are in essence are the same potential uh, that runs like a transform so you get in essence uh, let's say 100 and 115 120 on one and the same on the other and the middle we have been your center tap across the two phases to live neutral that then gives you your 240 volts now Mark's inverter has failed or there's something wrong with it internally where we're getting around 160, 570 volts on one and only 70 to 80 volts on the other one. Obviously that's not enough to trip the RCD, you can't see that difference. So again, the RCD hasn't worked, so we're gonna, I believe we're gonna just remove the uh, inverter altogether now. But something to bear in mind is that um, if you're gonna buy an inverter, uh, my preference or choice or any advice would be I know it's expensive generally if you can always go pure sine wave and always try and look for one which mimics your household electrics where it will say in there neutral earth bonded so that way the live from the inverter is 240 the neutral and the earth in essence are the same thing so it works like house electric not so much like a transformer with a centre tap again google it you'll there's loads of page information about centre taps and how it works and it's much too much of a long story for this video but that's the gist of that really for your inverters so just be wary of that well welcome to my workshop um just wanted to say i hope you like the video um obviously that isn't the be all and end all of how you should do it it's just how we did it so don't obviously take that as gospel you must do it this way it's everyone to the run that's just how we chose to do it hope you enjoyed the video if you did, please like it. If you haven't already, obviously press the magic subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell so you get all the notifications. Um, any questions, just put them in the uh, what you call it, comments at the bottom. Uh, thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.